Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. We are at John A. Osborne Airport on the beautiful island of Montserrat. Um, I want to show you, first of all, uh, two of the coolest freeware airports available in the Caribbean today. Uh, one of them is this one. If you can believe it, I mean, look, it's not the most technical airport in the world. This is a freeware airport, and if you go over here, um, there's a sign for the airport, there's an interior with like, you know, all the seating and everything else. It's, it's, uh, pretty cool in my opinion. And you got the fire station over here. Um, I think this is a fantastic little airport. It's also one of the trickiest airports in the Caribbean. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take you up to, uh, Stacia, up to St. Eustatius today to show you another of the coolest airports in the Caribbean. Uh, coolest freeware airports in the Caribbean and uh, I want to talk today not about anything technical well we might talk about a little bit technical stuff but I do want to talk about my vision for this channel what I want to do with this channel so without further ado rotating beacon on mixture and props full forward or say props because I'm used to flying uh, airplanes with more than one uh, with more than one engine uh, first thing I want to do is uh, G36 and there we go forgot to do that before we got ready here so we are connected to VATSIM I love flying on VATSIM alright mixtures and prop mixture and prop full forward battery Master and battery switches on, fuel pump on, crack the throttle, quick look outside, make sure there's nobody out there to kill or maim, let's engage the starter, got a good start, Magneto's back to both, throttle to 1000 RPM, the only thing we care about right now is oil pressure, and oil pressure is good, uh, avionics master coming on, fuel pump off fuel flow is still okay uh, the reason we care about oil pressure as soon as you start the engine is because if you don't have oil pressure you are running your engine with no oil and I am not an expert on engines by any stretch of the imagination but I've heard that's bad alright 122.8 will go for uh, that same comms here and it's a pretty straightforward flight. Uh, let's engage the parking brakes, lean the mixture for taxi. Uh, the parking brake is off. I need to open the cow flaps because it's hot. Um, adjust my head position again here. Sorry for doing that multiple times. So, Take a little bit of a look outside here as we pull away. Give you guys a little bit of a view here of this really cool little airport. I guess you're not gonna really see much of it. Um, so this uh, this is one of the most challenging little airports in the Caribbean, and you'll see why once we depart. The wind is favoring runway one zero we are going to be taking off uh, runway two eight and the reason why will become obvious to you as we go all right nav and strobe lights on taxi light on landing light on you want all your lights on when you get out on a runway uh, osborne traffic Bonanza, 3-6 Mike Romeo, back taxiing runway 28 for departure, Osborne. Um, so if we were taking off runway 1-0, we'd be taking off in this direction, which probably would work, but uh, we taken off downwind. It is yeah, kind of a strong wind, actually, 14 knots, so... We're going to have to use short field technique here. I want to make sure we use every inch of the runway. Put all the odds in our favor. And once we get airborne 
I'll start talking about my vision statement. I had a couple ideas for what I wanted to do for videos today. I've got the day off because tomorrow's my birthday and my company gives me the day off. And because it's on a Saturday, I took it on a Friday. Like, I don't know, I guess maybe they've got they've got pappies here. No, those aren't pappies. Okay, never mind. Those aren't pappies, so I don't know, maybe you can take off in this direction. Probably be good if I knew that, huh? Alright, let's get the airplane turned around here. And we'll get I'm gonna I'm gonna stay right here. I'm not even gonna move any further forward to get on center line. Go we'll mixtures and props full forward. I'm gonna put in one notch of flaps. And uh Ah, one more thing I want to do. And uh, wish us luck, guys. As we're in traffic, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo departing runway 28, right crosswind departure to the north, Osborne. All right, so we want to bring the power in. Take off power is set. We will release the brakes. Nudge over on center line here. Ooh, nervous. Airspeed's alive. Boy, this could be tight. This could be tight. This could be tight. This is tight. <laughs> and now you can see why we took off in this direction. Look at that. And let's bring the uh, let's bring the flaps up here. So yeah, that's uh, bring the prop back to 2,500, bring the manifold pressure back to 25, and uh, get a little bit of a look here at the airport and the, uh, and the island. Alright, make our right turn here. You know, it's funny because I've flown into that airport a bunch of times never flown out of that airport which is kind of weird actually now that I think about it but uh, I wanted to I really wanted to show you guys that airport because it's a cool one it's really pretty neat alright there we are pretty uh, pretty well established here take our obligatory picture um, so the island you see up here about our 11 o'clock is St. Kitts. And uh, I'm going to climb up to, I'm only going to climb up to 3,000 today. That is uh, Antigua over there. And uh, so my mission statement, or vision statement, or however you'd like to call it. Um, Obviously, the whole uh, let's turn the cow flaps, close the cow flaps. By the way, it's the whole uh, you know DLSS update and the Holy Grail DLDSR and DLSS settings videos that have gotten me on the map, so to speak got this channel on the map. It's 50 feet below your cruise altitude. Push the nose over. Pull the props back. I'm going to go 23 squared. Go 2300 on the prop. 23 inches of manifold pressure. And let's start trimming. So it's you know it's been those things, those tech things that have gotten my channel on the map. It's funny because you know in all in all the flying 
stuff I've tried um, to draw attention to not only my, my channel but to the islands because I think the islands are an amazing place to fly obviously um, nothing really I mean I, I wouldn't say that nothing really clicked but certainly nothing's clicked like the way the uh, the tech stuff is, has done and I'm not really a tech guy I mean like I'm computer literate I mean you know but by no means am I like one of these tech gurus that knows the ins and outs of like you know all the little details of of how things work but like I said it's clearly been the uh, the tech stuff that's gotten me you know on the map and we're gonna lean the engine now and uh, what we do is we just pull back on the, the mixture and watch the EGT go up and once that stops going up and starts going down that means we have reached peak peak EGT and EGT is exhaust gas temperature now I tell you I don't know anything about engines I know enough about them to run them well I don't know really how they work. Sort of like tech, actually. See, that's 11.05. I'm continuing to pull back on the mixture. And actually, what I'll do is just keep my my view right here. There's 11.15, 11.20, 5.30, 35. So we'll just keep pulling it back, the mixture, until that EGT reverses I expect will be pretty soon. See, there we go, there we go. See that? It's up to 1190, and then I kept pulling it out, and it switched and dropped. So now, I want to start pushing that in, that red lever, and we're going to push it in until it's 50 degrees lower than the top, which was 1190, so we want 1140. So there's... There's 1140. So now we are 50 degrees lean of peak. And that's where we want to be. Um, so what I want to do uh, with this channel is a lot of things. Um, basically my hope is that you guys have come for you know the tech stuff and you're and you're willing to stay for the aviation stuff because i think i think there's a lot of aviation stuff that people want to know and uh for those of you who don't know um i am an faa instrument rated pilot um and i think i have a lot to share and i think there's a there's a a, a thirst for um, knowledge on a lot of subjects that I think I can at least make a contr contribution to. Um, first and foremost being like um, you know I've, I've seen some videos for example on uh, instrument flight you know and it's one of those things that there's a lot of information out there for you to for you to, to to look at and to learn from. Certainly, from you know a quote unquote real real world pilot perspective, right? There's a lot of really good a aviation YouTube channels and videos um, that you can go to without me doing anything, and they provide pretty good instruction or pretty good I overviews and ideas of you know, approaches and, um, and things like, you know, departures and arrivals and stuff like that. But I think there's a, there's a, there is a, 
as I try to find my way to my fuel tank here. Um, turn my fuel pump on. And let's hope I don't turn this thing off. I always, yep, I did. I always turn it off. I never know which way this stupid thing goes. Um, I wish there was a both setting. I'm kind of surprised there isn't, actually. Um, but I think there is there are some unique aspects to flight simulation that that differ enough that real world instruction so to speak on 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 certain instrument topics is not really sufficient um, or maybe to put it a better way isn't really that useful to flight sim pilots um, and as flight sim pilots we kind of operate in unique ways like there's a lot of things that you think about quite intently in the real world that you don't really think a lot about in the sim um, first and foremost among those things is weather um, you know, weather is the is really the the big thing uh, in in real world aviation, and uh, it's just not something we really consider that much in, in simulation. And that's fine; it's all it's all good. Um, but things like. Uh, Things like setting up flights, like how to connect, and I can never get the aileron trim correct in this airplane. It's just, it's always way too much one way or the other. Um, this is an island I really want to go to, by the way. This is Nevis. Um, so sort of, you know, putting together a flight, uh, it, it's very easy to go to Simbrief and just have Simbrief spit out a flight plan and you follow it and that's that. It's very easy to do. And one thing I've noticed too, by the way, is that um, light, kind of like light misty clouds have a, a, tend to give you uh, stutters in this, in this sim. Um, I'm still refining my settings to get them the best that I want them to be. Um, but, uh, but there's a lot more to flight planning than that. And I think the flight sim community is a passionate community. You know, it's, it's a, I, I think I really get the feeling that it's a group of people that really want to know a lot more about kind of the ins and outs of certain aspects of aviation even if they don't necessarily use those things all the time and I think those are areas where I can help you guys or, or, or share what I know um, you know for one thing Simbrief doesn't select your flight plan or your, your approach rather you have to select it so how do you go about selecting a good approach how do you pick which one you want um, there is a video that's been out for the last week or so talking about the different approaches, the Zulu, Yankee, X-Ray, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie designations on approach names and what they, what they mean. And with all due respect to the, uh, to the person who put that video together, they, uh, let me just put it this way the information could be more accurate. Um, but just the number of, of views for that video tells me that there's a thirst for information about instrument flight and how, how instrument flight works um, and how to do it as realistically as we can in the sim. Um, briefing approaches. How do you brief an approach well? 
what are the key things to look for because there's there's you know some some small details in uh, in approaches or on approach plates that can really make a difference between uh, success and failure in an instrument approach what are those things and how do you how do you how do you know what to look for you know and again those are things that I think I can you know elaborate on and help help illuminate and uh, sorry that you're getting the screenshot thing there I've got uh, desktop capture enabled um, but even the things like you know I, I did a video on trim a couple weeks ago um, may seem like the easiest thing in the world to you I guarantee you that 95% or more of flight sim pilots don't use trim correctly now that doesn't make you much different from a lot of real world private pilots um, a lot of people don't understand trim and don't understand how to use it you know the best way to use it uh, what it's even what it's even doing you know trim is not for pitch control um, you know so just actual like meat and potatoes flight instruction for lack of a better term you know how do you do certain things like turns another thing that you think is very basic and very easy uh, go take a flight lesson do steep turns and tell me how easy turns are um and like big ones like takeoffs and landings I think those are things that people want you know people could use some information on it. you think taking off is easy taking off well is not easy at all uh, very few pilots do it well as we see uh, St. Kitts here and just you know also just showing you guys around this area you know obviously I have a, I have a passion for, for flying in the Caribbean why? Because flying in the Caribbean is awesome <laughs> and we've got um, as you see this stunning scenery here we've got a huge uh moment coming up for the Caribbean in Microsoft Flight Simulator um, the Caribbean has always kind of been left out uh, in terms of like you know focus on the region there, there's a couple developers you know that have been around for quite a while been developing for you know FSX for prepared um, I'm talking about like the Latin VFRs, the uh, the richer simulations. Um, there's a couple more that are just not coming to mind right now. Um, but now we've got some new entrants like uh, SLH Sim Designs. Um, and one of the things I'm I'm trying to show you today is a couple great freeware airports. I mean, these are great freeware airports. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're fantastic. And, you know, I know them all. I know them all inside and out in this area. And with the update, uh, with the Caribbean update coming in the end of January, which is, you know, a month and a half away, um, there's going to be a lot more attention brought to this region. And very deservedly so. Uh, and uh, as we see Montserrat out here, our destination, uh, excuse me, St. Eustatius, um, locally known as Stacia. 
And uh, so basically, you know, and I've got a couple more tech tricks up my sleeve. It's funny because there's, there's one in particular that I've, I've been thinking about for a while. And like, for example, I'll give you an example. And one of the critiques I've had for my videos is I keep changing subjects. Getting back to flying. You may notice I'm not using an autopilot. Um, I'm flying at 3,000 feet, you know, 3,060 feet. Um, it seems easy to be able to just maintain a good altitude and heading, for example. You know, I'm, I'm purposely off course, you know, off the GPS course, because it's a direct two and it goes right over the top of these two islands and I wanted to go around the side so you guys could get a view of these islands but um, you know so I think one of the things that I would like to do as well is um, help you guys get better at basic flying um, And now I can't turn this thing off because I can only go in one direction. So it's, there we go. Um, so, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of basic flying, you know, uh, fundamental skills sort of thing. Um, I'm going to go power back to about 20 inches right now. We'll just start a gentle descent. Um, station traffic, but uh, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo, about 10 miles to the south. Uh, I'm going to be flying over the departure end of runway 06 and making a left downwind entry for runway 06 station. And so basic flying, you know, fundamental flying stuff instrument flying stuff, fundamental instrument flying stuff, which is going to include some weather because there there is no instrument flying, there's no discussion of instrument flying without talking about weather. There just isn't. Um, bring the RPMs back to 2100. And I think there's some neat, like, I'm uh, again, I'm not, I, I kind of am realizing that I'm very similar in a lot of subject matters. I'm not a weatherman. And you don't have to be a weatherman as a pilot. But there are certain things, certain little details, that if you know them and you understand them, can really be helpful for you. Uh, in term, uh, The big thing that we want to know as pilots is, is the weather that, that we've had predicted likely to be accurate and if not which direction is it going that's kind of the big thing that we want to know as pilots uh, another thing is VATSIM so I'm on VATSIM right now I'm always on VATSIM if you guys want to look me up on Volanta I use Volanta all the time uh, Island Sim Pilot on Volanta and for any of you who haven't guessed I'm not from the islands I am I live in central New York, uh, and I just, I l absolutely love the Caribbean. I just love the Caribbean. Um, and, uh, yeah, so flying, you know, flying fundamentals, IFR fundamentals, that sim is a big one that I'd like to share some stuff with you guys about because there's again there's there's tricks to things on bat sim that there's a lot of good bat sim videos out there people explaining how bat sim works or you know how to do certain things there are some tricks to bat sim that if you know them will make bat sim a whole lot less intimidating and you're going to be able to kind of handle certain experiences or certain situations in that sim um, like a pro if you know how to do it and you know like I said there's some good information out there but I think I've got some things that other people really haven't 
haven't shared or really haven't focused on. Um, so, um, station traffic, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo, left downwind, left downwind runway 6, station. Um, like I'll, I'll give you a little one. You want to sound like a pro on VATSIM? Um, you know, you always announce your destination, or you, you always announce the, the airport that you're calling. Look at this. at the beginning and the end of your radio call, right? But you don't say Stacia traffic, left downwind 06, Stacia traffic. You only say traffic at the end of the first time that you mention the name. And the reason why you say uh, the name twice is because if somebody switches to it, we're on what's called a CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. And if somebody, so the, the, the frequency that we're on is used by multiple airports. So if somebody's flying into a different airport than we're flying into, but they're on the same frequency, because we're all using the same frequency, um, they may switch to the radio frequency, you know, as they're approaching the area, and only catch the second part of your broadcast. So they don't know which which airport you're talking about. So if you add the name of the airport to the end of your transmission, then they know what you're talking about. That's why you say it twice. But for I, mean, I actually don't really know why, but we only use traffic at the end of the first time we say the name so station traffic bonanza 36 mike romeo turning a five mile left base runway six station so if you want to sound like a pro on VATSIM, only say the destination once don't ask me why it's just the way it is and you can you can always tell a real a quote-unquote real pilot on VATSIM because they do that. Now here's another little thing. We're landing runway six, right? How do I know I'm on a perfect left base? Because the six is on my left hash mark here. That's how I know I'm on a perfect left base. Makes it very, very easy. So there's all these little things about not only flying out of Addison, but just aviation in general that I think I can share with you guys. And at the same time, it's gonna be more like a three mile final though. And at the same time, have fun and check out some really cool airports. Station traffic, uh, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo, turning a 3 mile final, runway 06, station. And uh, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go mixture full forward, prop full forward. Why am I getting more? Oh, I know why I'm getting <laughs> So here I am telling you guys the ins and outs of aviation. I forget to put my gear down. Alright, so you can see on the left side of the runway here, the pappies, and I've got, I think it's, if it's four lights, then I'm in trouble. If it's two lights, I'm, I'm spot on. But, uh, See, where's the wind coming from? Definitely coming out of the right a little bit. And it's a four light pappy, so what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of power until I see two white, two red. And then I'll resume my descent. And as always, if I don't make a good landing, you guys aren't going to think I'm much worth listening to. Alright, there we go. I want a descent rate of about 400 feet a minute. See there when you get to 500. Station traffic, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo, short final runway 6, station. 
Man, I'm not liking this approach at all. And the reason I don't like it is because I'm dragging this in, which is poor, poor flying. This is, this is not how it's done, guys. This is not how it's done. That's awful. So, finish off my video on how we want to make all our make ourselves all genius pilots by having a terrible approach and landing. I lean the mixture. Um, the problem with that approach, I was It was a low energy approach, and low energy approaches are garbage. Um, I was, I was, I wasn't super low, but three red, one white, and I didn't follow my own mantra. On, I mean, I sort of did, but then I got, I got back right back in the same situation. So, what you do on, a, on an approach like that, if you're a little bit low. Or if you're a lot low, um, you don't don't just nibble at it and try to get back. Just you know, put in a little bit of power, a little bit of power, a little bit of power. Try to get back up onto that two white, two red. Put in some power, level off, climb if need be, but get yourself back to two white, two red, uh, and then resume your descent. Now, I, I don't know this airplane very well. Um, I, don't, I only fly it really in these videos because if I fly the Warrior, which I know very well, uh, the video takes twice as long and you guys get bored. Um, but get back up on that two white, two red, and then, and then resume your descent. And what I did is I got back up to two white, two red, and then 10 seconds later, I was at three red again. And it's a flat approach, you know, and you've got a lot of power in trying to, trying to, trying to maintain, you know, a shallow descent rate. And it's just crap. It's, it was really pretty poor. Um, but it's a great, it's a great example for the landing video I want to do. And uh, sort of a what not to do. It's exactly it's, it's exactly what it is. It's a what not to do. Um, Stacia traffic uh, Bonanza three six Mike Romeo's clear the runway Stacia. And so yeah, that's kind of my mission statement, my my vision statement of what I want to do with this channel. Um. I want to do a lot of flying stuff. I want to do a lot of informational. I don't want to say instructional because you know people get weird about using the word flight instruction with with within the context of flight simulation. And I don't really know why, because I mean, first of all, none of you are going to go out and and use anything I tell you in a real airplane because you're probably smarter than that. Um. But second of all, even if you did, I mean, what you, you know, the, the, it's whatever. It's just not anything to worry about. But we get weird about the term flight instruction when it comes to uh, the flight sim. So mixture idle cutoff. Throttle is idle. Parking brake is set. A uh, few pumps off. Flaps are up. Lights coming off. And I can see that the prop is just going to keep going. Lights are off. Avionics mast are off before you turn the mags off. Uh, master and battery switches off. And we're done. 
Um, but here, so I was telling you at the beginning of the video that I wanted to show you two cool freeware airports. Here's another one. This is uh, St. Eustatius. Uh, I mean, you've even got like the the sign that's at the airport. You've got you know all the hangars and everything. You've obviously got the arrival hall. Um, you know, it's just it's stunning to me that this is freeware. Uh, and nobody's bothered to do this airport as payware, and I can see why, because there's just no need to. Um, but they fly, uh, they fly ATR, uh, not ATRs, uh, the Twin Otters in here from, uh, from St. Martin quite a bit. Um, but anyway, you know, that's kind of what I want to do. Um, you know, flying, you know, flight instruction information, um, IFR stuff, that sim stuff, uh, and you know whatever tech ideas come to come to fruition, and uh, and and just show you guys around the islands and show you some fun places to fly. So I, I hope that's an attractive package for people. Like I said at the beginning, you know, uh, I hope that people came for the. Uh, for the you know for the for the tech stuff that got me all the attention and uh, and are gonna and you guys are gonna stay uh, for the flying because I think there's a lot of fun stuff that we can do so I hope you guys are doing well thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later and guys I'm gonna throw one little addendum onto the end of this flight uh, the end of this video uh, I was just reviewing my flight on Volanta and my landing was terrible we know that. Um, <laughs> whatever um but i wanted to show you something that is the mark of a good pilot and the mark of a good pilot is flying a good pattern now this is our runway 624 you can see my downwind is very very nice and square my base leg is very very nice and square in terms of you know it's 90 degrees to that runway uh turned in a little bit late um, not too bad at all. That's one of the things that um, that I'll talk about in my landing video. If you guys want, if you guys want landing instruction from somebody who just, you know, balls up that landing pretty bad. I mean, it was it wasn't terrible. You know, a lot of landings are are usable, and and believe me, there's some real world pilots who are pretty uh pretty ham fisted, but you know. Not every not every landing has to be a greaser. It's what we're always trying for. But this this is one of the things that I think I can I can share with you guys and and teach you how to do relatively easily, pretty easily. Um, is how to fly nice square patterns. If you watch a lot of even a lot of real world pilots, they'll be you know their their downwind leg will be out here. Or it'll it'll be you know coming in this way, and then they'll overshoot and come back and. They look, they they don't look nice, and you sh there's a reason why we do patterns the way we do, and there's a reason why you want your patterns to be nice and consistent, uh, and nice and square. And once you learn how to do them, they become second nature. Um, and there are ways that I can I can show you guys how to do them. Um, that'll give you consistent results no matter what the runway is because that's really the trick is being able to do it at an, at an airport that you're not familiar with on the first try that's the trick and uh so this is just one of the things that uh small details but really make a make a difference between good clean flying and sloppy flying and i think this is one of the things that i can you know share with you guys the knowledge of how to do this simply and uh you know be able to apply it um, you know, to your own flying very quickly. And uh, yeah, just a little detail, but something I thought I'd share. Thanks, guys.